Well, yeah, so now I've made the template here for my uh, top of my rails. Now you notice again, this side is not the same as this side of the curve, because if you try to stick that up under there, there's this gap here. This is a smaller curve here. You need that to come down and cover the top of this on your rails to cover your raised panel. You don't want to be the exact parallel thing, so you need a little bit smaller curve. So that's why they're different on this side of the template and this side. You can't just draw them parallel. So I'm going to attach this with double stick tape. And then I'm going to route that flush trim bit against this template. And then this will form the arch for the rail. So it's just a thin piece of plywood I took. But again, don't get confused. You can't just use this curve and draw it again. You already use this for the raised panel, the top part. It's a smaller curve on this part that'll fit over the top. It'll come down and cover it. Overlap that a little bit like that. Okay, so one more time I want to go over this point here. That the uh, curve is not the same as the top curve on the template that you use for your, for your raised panel. So this curve, if you can see, you can't really fit it over there. There's a gap in here. It's not the same shape. But you can bring it down up over the edge there and where it overlaps. So it has to be drawn parallel and smaller curve. And I guess you do the distance from the uh, slot. It would be how parallel you would make it, how deep your slot is for the uh, rails and styles. But this template's already got it pre-done, so I didn't have to figure out the uh, distance and draw my own. So it'll fit down, cover it, but don't try to cut it the exact same. Put it on top with rails. It's going to look funny if you, if, you try to, if you try to do it off of this one and brought it down a little bit. It wouldn't, wouldn't really line up exactly right. It might look okay there, but it wouldn't line up right. Regarding the rails for the top above the door, in my template, what I originally did before I even uh, cut this out is draw a center line. And my plate here has some center line marks here. I ran just a little pencil mark. So when I lined it up, it was on the center line. Now, what I'm doing now, instead of having to mark every single rail right down the middle and line it up at the middle, I'm just going to put a mark on each, each corner here. Let's see if we can see that. There's a line right here. And a line over here, and I'm going to line this up between it, um, so it's right on that edge. So every piece I don't have to mark. I'll just every piece is the same width, so I'm just going to put it between the two the two lines I've got drawn on my template. And I've got a little piece of cut off here that was just a little proud, a little bit, but not high enough to cover everything. So line it up there, then bring it down flush against this to draw my initial curve for a bandsaw cutout. Of course, I'm going to cut on the inside of that first. That'll be my eventual routing line with the flush trim bit. So I'm going to cut out the waist here with the bandsaw inside the line. But this way, having a mark on each end um, saves me from having to put a center line through all of the pieces or even mark the piece. I don't have to, after the first one, which I did find the center and marked and lined up, after that one, I'll just stick them right in between the two slots. I don't know if you can see it there very well. Yeah, I'm probably a little close. But I'll stick it between the two spots here and just line up each piece since they're all cut the same width. Yeah, so I had some trouble. The very first rail I cut coming out of the cut toward the end, it, it caught the grain, the flush trim bit right there, going against the grain and tore out on the corner, even though I just had a maybe a 32nd inch or so. The second one I got a little better. I sanded off the little tip that was sticking out, got it closer to the form, the template form. Didn't tear out that time, but I did get a couple of these deeper cuts from slightly wobbling on the stand. Third one I switched. I went over and got the down cut spiral bit. This bit here. How you tell down cut? You look at the, you turn, you turn it and you look at the light and how you follow the light as it goes down the cut, you turn it the direction the router table would turn the bit and you'll see the light go down which sucks it down to the table. But anyway I went and got this bit. It's a really long bit so I had to build another even higher 
um, shelf on my shaper table to catch so it would catch the template form at the top, but it cut much nicer. Even my pin was a little short, so I had to put a bolt on the bottom, a nut on the bottom, raise it up, and then tighten it. So then, after I take and glue these to the, I'm sorry, not glue them, but double stick tape. This is called spec tape or something. Yeah, double stick Turner's tape to the form, template form. Then I take it over and take it over and put it in my um, bicycle vise, bicycle chain vise. Tighten it so the, uh, the adhesive from the tape takes well. I'm just using two little short pieces. Take back over here. I'm just using two short pieces about maybe about that long and I'm just putting them just putting them right piece about this long here and a piece about this long here and that's holding the template on good enough. Now I've added this for stability. It's, it was a cut off piece that's the same width as these. So I've added it for stability now. It's stuck on there so I won't slant because when I'm slanting just a slight bit of dip will put a nice big line in here from the router bit and that's going to take a lot of sanding to get that out. This one's probably just right. I did make extra rails. I made just 14 though for 13 doors. I wish I'd made even more. I can go back and cut some more if I need to. We'll see how it goes. I'm talking now because I took my microphone off because the vacuum is about to be on in the router machine. I'm going to show you one of the rails I put. Again, this is just a stabilizing piece on the top to keep it from tilting. That's working great. This is a down cut spiral router bit half inch shank. Here we go. <laughs> Down cut spiral bit is really doing a great job. Very smooth here. And putting that stabilizer on was a big difference because if it just tilts just a slight bit even, it puts a big groove through there. So it's cutting real smooth. Again, it's an expensive piece. And I had to raise the table up even higher than my normal hardy backer boards. This is probably about mm, half inch to three quarter inch piece of uh, particle board. So that's the way to do it especially coming up on that you know i thought about climb cutting it the opposite way but boy without a fence with pin freehand routing and those bits spinning around like that with my fingers near it nope rather keep my fingers it's worth the investment in a nice um, spiral down cut spiral bit this jig is working out really well for uh, routing out the ends of the rails coping i would guess you would call that so it doesn't it rides against the fence here not against the bottom of the fence but the top so that's good because even i've got my uh, arbor sticking up a little and would be hitting things plus a cutter cut into whatever table i was a little worried whether to cut the curve first and then cope the ends or whether to cope the ends and then do the curve but it actually this piece here kind of angles in so it'll it'll come in and catch the edge there and hold it tight against here this holds it down. This is the backer board that screws in. There's two screws coming in here that hold it in place to prevent uh, tear out at the end. So let's go ahead and run a pass. <clears throat> Now there's this lip on the bottom because I'm using really thick stock. I wish I probably should have planed it down thinner. 
So I've got this lip on the bottom and I'm taking that to the table saw and I've set up a stop block and set the height just right. And I nibbled, I kind of used samples and got just rarely right on that line there. I didn't want to leave extra gap because then it might toggle back and forth and open up the gap on the front. So I've got it lined up just right with a stop block on the table saw sled and I'm running it through and slicing off this bottom edge. It's just the way the cutter is because of the thickness of my stock. So one point to make, I think I learned it from Jen Heavey, but you should put X's, use chalk because the pencil line is too hard to get off and it indents the wood and takes a lot more sanding. To mark the good side and the bad side, this side has a little bit of a defect in the wood here, so I'm going to use this for the front of the door. So mark the bad side so I know when I switch it after I route one end, this is the bottom rail, and then route the other end that I won't flip it over. If you flip it over, you end up routing the opposite ends. Plus when you run on the table saw, it'll be actually the opposite when you're cutting off the little notch on the bottom for mine. Make sure you play, make plenty of extra rails and styles. I found that out the hard way and had to uh, redo the uh, top, especially the arched rail on the top. The bottom rails, I've just got a few extra, two or three. Um, but make sure you make extra ones. And also, cut them all in one batch where you've got your stop block on your table saw sled or on your miter sled. Because if you <coughs> have to go back later, getting them set up to cut exactly the exact same width is going to be tough if you move your stop block. <coughs> My problem was the other night, I finished like 14 of the top rails of Cathedral Arch thought I was done and forgot that I had the bottom styles to do so I'd already taken my stop block off and moved on to the table saw so I had to redo them and had to match them. It took a lot of trial and error to get it just right just by running my finger back and forth putting one next to it that was already done from the top rail and just running it back and forth until I didn't feel any little edge on there. Anyway here we go so I'm going to put the bad side up and do a style here. Here comes a vacuum. Sorry about the noise. <laughs> Getting ready to run the styles through. Of course, I did a lot of test pieces first to make sure the fit was good for the rails. And I'm going to uh, do some real long boards. As you can see, I've got about three of these real long ones run through in one long pass and cut them later. I had to bring back my old jet fence that I haven't used in a long time. And I had to put a screw a track into it, used a table saw blade to cut a dado. I didn't use a dado blade, I just could bunch it single saw cuts and put these jessam hold downs in they're kind of angled about five degrees in so they're supposed to suck it in and hold it down pretty tight in my experience they don't always hold them all the way up close to the bit so i put an extra feather board on i didn't put one afterwards but it should kind of keep it a little bit tight they'd certainly hold it down i haven't seen them pop up but in my test piece it seemed like the cut wasn't as deep as it should have been so i just put an extra feather board so here we go, I'm going to run some long passes through. I've got about three of these really long ones here to make and cleared myself out enough room for the outfeed table and then I'll cut them later, probably on the uh, probably on the table saw sled, but they're kind of long for that. I might have to use my miter. I still got my miter saw set up with, uh, with a zero clearance wood that I put on there, decrease the chip out previous cutoffs. I'm going to run my styles uh, longer th than I need when I cut them down to size and then I'm going to do the glue up with them longer and then cut them afterwards after they're already glued up in the panel then I'll cut the ends off the styles. I've seen other people do that and it just kind of makes sense so you don't have to get it exact on your glue up to get it exactly lined up. I'd rather just cut it afterwards. I'll use the table saw sled for that. Let's chip out.